With a population of 188,000, the state of South Dakota is the 17th largest by area but the 5th least populous. It was named after the Lakota and Dakota Sioux Native American tribes and was admitted simultaneously with North Dakota as the 39th and 40th state of the United States in 1889. South Dakota is geographically divided by the Missouri River and referred to as East River and West River. East River is where most of the state's population reside and with its fertile soil is where most farming takes place, whereas West River represents South Dakota's cattle ranching and tourism industry. I've done 16 miles and there is absolutely no wind. The forecast changed overnight. I, I just looked at it and it's like no wind for the next three days. There is evidence of humans inhabiting South Dakota for several thousand years with Sioux tribes becoming the dominant population by the 19th century. The westward expansion of the United States with the demand for mining and European Americans looking for land to settle into and develop brought intense pressure upon these Native American tribes. Many Indian wars ensued during the later half of the century, culminating in 1890 with one of the worst recorded massacres, the Battle of Wounded Knee. It claimed the lives of more than 300 men, women, and children of the Lakota people by the United States Army. Even though 25 Army soldiers died and 39 were wounded in the battle, in 1990 both houses of Congress passed a resolution formally expressing deep regret for the massacre. The views and the roads and everything about it is phenomenal. I'm having the best day. And I wasn't really expecting this. Every one of these states has something different to offer and South Dakota is, uh, is getting to me. I like it a lot. Beautiful, just gorgeous scenery, open skies, lots of green everywhere. I heard it's because it's been raining a lot, but either way. I'm getting it. Let's keep riding. I'm breath less. That was an awesome hill. I'm at the top. Coming to Pickstown. I'm pretty sure that there's no way this video camera can show you guys how beautiful this panoramic is. Breathless, man. South Dakota is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. With a population of 225, Pickstown is home to Fort Randall Dam and Lake Francis Case, the 11th largest reservoir in the United States. The dam, with its eight generating units, provide annual hydroelectric power to an estimated 245,000 households. Downstream from Fort Randall Dam on the Missouri River is the Randall Creek State Recreational Area where I camp for the night. I had an awesome sleep. The morning was spectacular. Just the temperatures keep going lower and lower and just makes you sleep so much better. So now I gotta backtrack a little ways and go to Snake Creek Campground. It's only 55 miles away, but the other option is to go 98. So I have to piece it together to get to where I wanna get. The views are outstanding, outstanding. Just everywhere you look, my, I just can't stop looking around. <laughs> if you haven't been to South Dakota, I'll take a plane right to this state, 
rent a car and drive around for a week. It's so pretty. People are so nice too. I've been riding for 30 miles without seeing a single gas station or hardly a house. This is like an ocean of land and fields. Let's get lost in this uh, whole just riding. No cars, hardly, very rare. And I still have 10 more miles to get to Platte, which is the only town that I see coming up. I'm gonna take a break when I get there and get some fluids and think about what I'm gonna do after that. A distinctive characteristic of many of South Dakota's roads is their pink coloration. It is due to what is named pink Sioux quartzite, a metamorphic rock form when quartz-rich sandstone with iron deposits is exposed to high temperature and pressure fusing quartz grains, forming dense hard rock. Pink Sioux quartzite is found at the intersection of the states of South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa, and it is still being quarried in Jasper, Minnesota. Today I started doing more logistics with the help of this lady in, in a Casey's, which is like a 7-Eleven convenience store, or Circle K, I guess, has another one like it, but they're really legit. Mid Midwest has thousands of them, and they're really good. And this lady, like, helped me out with her map and told me, like, what logistically would be my best, like, bouncing uh, across South Dakota because it's not that easy. I look ahead, and there's not many camping sites, and every time I call a camping site is, I hate to say this, 37 to $42 a night for a not a great camping site. So she told me about this inn called the King's Inn in Platte where I just where I stopped after 45 miles and anyways logistically it makes sense for me to stop today early which is like three and stay in this place for sixty dollars which is twenty dollars more than the campground that was in a different direction than I really wanted to go considering the wind direction and everything I'm getting I know that's a lot, but when you're bicycle touring, you're seeing all these variables and trying to figure out how to get to where you want to get more efficiently and like, you know, see more. Anyways, I'm in a motel. Oh, and I got to watch my bike. I'm going to lube it up. It was just a mess. It was so dirty. And my bags and I got to do my laundry. So that, that was actually, you know, it all worked out. And I think um, I got like a pizza place next door, so. Later. I put a lot of effort last night into making my bike like new and it looks pretty legit right now. It's uh, super clean. So I can't wait to get on it and ride. I'm gonna do about 60 miles to a campground in Chamberlain and then the next day, tomorrow, I'm going to head west and hang out with some pheasant hunting lodge people that have uh, hooked me up to be able to stay with them somehow. I've never met them, so I'm looking forward to that. Alrighty, let's do it. Thank you, Kingston. That was legit. I actually consider staying one more night, but i got to ride. Case this is the place to be. Every time I see a town coming in, I'm always looking for these, these, these uh, convenience stores. They're all over the Midwest, there's thousands of them. They have a kitchen in there and they make amazing pizza, especially their breakfast scrambled egg pizza slice is amazing. That was good to me, a little town. It has two convenience stores, a grocery store and a motel, the King's Inn. My bike feels insane, insane. Wow, it's like smooth. I put a lot of effort last night and getting the bike tuned up and cleaned completely. What a difference. I gotta do it more often for sure. Anyways, leaving flat. Sometimes I'm sad to leave some places, like I could hang out. 
<laughs> so it's pretty cool. But I got more to see. The road is ahead of me. The life of a traveling junkie. There's never way too hard a day and there's never an easy day, <laughs> for sure. Let's see what today brings. It's the first time I see sunflowers. One of the reasons I am attracted to bicycle touring is the way it makes me feel happy and often euphoric. This is in large part due to endorphins, which are natural neurochemicals produced by the body's nervous system and released into the body in response to stimuli such as pain, stress, eating, and most notably, exercise. There is nobody on these roads. It's just me. South Dakota. It's really got a hold on me. Pretty awesome stuff, man. Really awesome stuff. With these endorphins combined with ever-changing scenery, absorption of cultural differences from one state and town to the next, never-ending information gathering, and sense of accomplishment after daily riding, bicycle touring has become, after these last five weeks, a significantly meaningful part of my life. I've been looking forward to getting to Chamberlain for a long time. It's, a, it's my last push to the Northwest. And now I can focus more on covering ground West. My trip's been really Northwesterly from South Carolina. So I've been uh, not necessarily crossing the country directly from East to West. And this marks the last of my northward bound. I'm gonna do some more north and south riding in Montana but, and Wyoming, but for the most part, I'm heading west now. And that feels good. With a population of 2,387, Chamberlain sits on the eastern bank of Lake Francis Case, a dammed section of the Missouri River. This will be my last time crossing the Missouri River as it winds northward towards North Dakota and I head directly westward towards the Badlands and the Black Hills which are on the west end of South Dakota. Tonight's my last night uh, staying around the Missouri because I'm heading west and this is tomorrow morning I'm going to cross the bridge, that bridge, the Chamberlain, South Dakota bridge and start heading west to the Badlands so this is my, uh, my good goodbye evening uh, moment with the Missouri. 